one of the biggest creatures on Earth, feeds on some of the tiniest. The wide mouth of the whale shark scoops up microscopic organisms which drift near the surface. Yet, big as it is, and small as they are, they have much in common. The cells of these tiny organisms are of a similar type to the cells which make the body of the shark. Some will actually grow into larger creatures. They are larvae of fish, crabs and lobsters. But if you look carefully, you can see drifting and swimming amongst them much smaller cells, mere dots by comparison. Those are bacteria, and they are quite different. In fact, the difference between these types of cells is of great importance. All life is divided into two types of cells, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryote means before the nucleus, and that takes in the bacteria. Eukaryote means true nucleus, and that includes all multicelled life and some pretty strange single-celled organisms called the protists, which is what I'm collecting here. Go down to your local swamp or duck pond collect some scum and have a look through a microscope at the amazing community of microorganisms in it. You'll see bacteria as little dots swimming around and you'll see larger and more complex cells. These bigger ones are protists, which are single-celled eukaryotes. They are obviously much more complicated than bacteria. In fact, they look like cells within cells and cells within cells is a good description of eukaryotes. We think that around one and a half billion years ago that's exactly how they started. Eukaryotes developed in a world markedly changed from earlier times. Early prokaryotes over some two billion years had evolved a vital chemical process, photosynthesis, converting solar energy into chemical energy. One product of photosynthesis is oxygen, and photosynthetic bacteria over eons raised the oxygen level in the atmosphere. Oxygen offered a new way of life, the aerobic way, and aerobic bacteria also appeared. In this diversified and no doubt more competitive environment, eukaryotes were yet another development. How big a development becomes clear when we look at a eukaryote-like amoeba. This thing is much bigger than a bacterium. It moves and flexes itself in a way that is not seen in bacteria. It contains many complicated looking bodies, including a nucleus, which bacteria don't have. Its way of life is clearly more complex than prokaryotes although not for a second should we consider it superior. After all, it still shares a world teeming with successful prokaryotic life forms. Rather, our interest in eukaryotes is because this type of cell is the basis of our own branch of life. In whatever form they appear, eukaryotic cells certainly do look like cells within cells. It may be that eukaryotes were the first true phagocytes, that is, cells which eat other cells. This stentor is trying to sweep smaller cells into its gullet, where it will engulf them. This requires a thin, flexible exomembrane to surround and ingest them. Bacteria don't have this. They have a rigid outer cell wall, and if they're going to digest food, they secrete enzymes out through the wall and absorb the products. On the other hand, the wall prevents them from swelling up and bursting from water absorption. In eukaryotes like stentor, though, the exomembrane is no protection against bursting. Stentor uses a contractile vacuole, like a bilge pump, to combat the water continuously leaking in. It's a case of alternative strategies. On the other hand, some problems can only have one answer. For example, while the diffusion of water through the exomembrane, that is, osmosis, must be held in check, cells need molecules of gas and nutrients to diffuse in 
and waste products to diffuse out at quite rapid rates. Diffusion is the tendency of molecules to drift from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Fast diffusion only works across tiny distances, so no part of a cell can be more than a few microns from its outside environment. All cells must stay tiny or be incredibly thin. Bigger organisms cannot be made of bigger cells. They have to be cooperations of many microscopic ones. So if a eukaryotic cell looks like cells within a cell, is that literally true? Could they be bacteria in there? That's an interesting question. And the answer is yes and no. When we look at them closely through an electron microscope, we can see many similarities between organelles and free living prokaryotes. These mitochondria, for example, look very much like bacteria. But when we look at them closely, we find that their DNA is not enough to keep them alive as free living organisms. So what we have is probably an example of a very ancient endosymbiosis. And over millions of years, the bacteria have given up some of their DNA to their host cell. Mitochondria and chloroplasts, maybe they were free living once, but now they're an integral part of the eukaryotic cell. It's complicated because for other organelles, like the nucleus itself, there's no evidence of a free living origin. A cell is a self-sustaining chemical factory. It needs energy, and to get it, it needs fuel. Stentor's energy comes from the organic molecules it digests from its prey.